There's a place, a school, an institution where a professor resides. One that for the past 30 years has traveled the world teaching others. A pioneer in America of the fighting science of savant. One who codified the sports of this fighting style. One who has produced clubs, champions, and continues to develop. Listen to words of Professor Buitron. Here you have me again, answering a couple of questions that have been pouring in and been asking some of our students and folks that we've touched and embraced over the last years of what they wanted to find out about Savat. You know, one of the questions was, who was your best fighter? Who was my best fighter? Well, you know what? I didn't have a best. I never had a best. I cannot say I had a best because I had tremendous athletes. Folks that gave it their all, gave it their will. Now, you have to understand the time frames. You know, it's been a long time since I have been teaching and having people compete and for the different competitions that we've been having. And you look back and you kind of, you know, it's hard because we've had so many great, great individuals that came in and trained and I would like to say everybody's name, but I'm going to tell you the ones that come to mind that were there all the time training, giving their best, giving their all. That's where I like to say, I like to give my shot at. You know, putting my thinking cap on now with everybody there, I'm gonna have to break it up with who was training. You know, we've competed in Box Francesa a lot, both regional, national, international. We've competed in boxing, USA boxing, both regional, state. The same thing with um, Gan, when we formulated in the last several years, we formulated the stick fighting portion of USA Savat, the gentleman's stick fighting competition. So I'm going to look at those that have had dedication, that wanted to win, those that actually you would see in all the events, you know, because, you know, people do not understand that to have a fight, or to have a bout, or to have a card, you have to literally have a doctor present at all times, a head official. You have to have a timer. You have to have one, two, three judges for regional and state, National, you have to have five, so add two more for five. You have to have a referee, and usually you want to have two, three, because they're going to be tired after a couple of bouts, so put two into the mix. So you already have eight people behind you. You have to have a fighter's delegate, which is the one that checks to make sure that the competitors are geared up properly and dealt with. And then, of course, then you have to have your head official, right? So you have 10, between 10 to 13 people are needed just to have a bow. Imagine that. 
These are people that are giving their best. They're giving their time. They're not getting paid because number one, it's amateur. So they have to have that in the heart. So we cannot forget those. But we're gonna talk about the question that was asked about who was the better, best one. Number one, I, I don't have a best. I had very great students. I've had some disappointments, but I've had some very great students. Very great students. Now, looking at the whole scenario, let's start with Kendall Martin. And these are people that never Kendall Martin is known in the Savat wor uh, world as Mecánico and Iniciador Mecánico has been with me since 1991, all right, 1991, that's 29 years, imagine that, he's been my student for 29 years, he competed in he was the first Texas champion, actually he was the first champion of the United States because at that time he didn't have any, right? So he was the first Texas champion, one of, one of the first U.S. champions. He fought internationally and he was one of the longest competitors of Savat here in the United States. Now, the other person that comes to mind will be John Marsala. John Marsala, great individual, better known in Savat. He's a coach of Savat. Better known in the Savat realm as a speedy to nickname that for, for having knocked out an individual in boxing in 10 seconds flat in the first round. I mean, these are competitors, these are saboteurs that competed both in books and says and so on. Competed in some of the tough man competition, some odd competitions. Became US champion. Did well in boxing. Did well in the tough man back then because you know there, there was no MMA in the night. Not as it is now. Most will probably be doing that as well. I would have, you know. And um, probably after him, I have to say Joaquin Samano, or better yet, Doctor Joaquin Samano, because I'm all these students have they've gone on in in life and continue. He's now a dentist. You know, there are people that I've known for a very long time, you know, they were family if you want to put it that way. Joaquin Samano, Dr. Samano, known in in the US in Savat or USA Savat realm as Babyface, you know, because he was just a kid, you know, when he came in there. And he was an excellent boxer, an excellent saboteur, a well-rounded individual, had not only speed, had power, had had that energy that you wanted that was there. And to me, I think if he would have continued, you would have seen, he would have been one of the ones that probably come out from the United States to become a world champion of Savat, if, if that would have continued, but that didn't happen. Um, he went on and became a doctor, which is wonderful, a dentist. And that's just the way life is, you know, it gives you those triumphs. Now,
Now for my next one, I have to say, Maddie Nicole. Uh, Maddie, you know, I remember him walking into my school over there off of Conflans and um, his wife was being from Fort Worth, he was French. He had no friends. She called me up and I had just opened up the school and, he said, and I had just come back from, from France and I was there and uh, we were setting up and she brought him in. He didn't even know that being from France, actually a couple of blocks away from the club I used to train with my professor Paturel and he had never heard of Boxing Sessavat. He had done some Thai boxing at, the, at a club over there in Antia. But uh, he became a great competitor in the beginning. Texas champion the first two times of the Metro Blasts. In the first three Metro Blasts, he did great. He's continued to compete, especially with, uh, in France. And it's funny because uh, last, two years ago, I get a call from uh, Professor Big Blue and through WhatsApp and he goes, hey, I have somebody here that wants to talk to you. And it was, it was Maddie, you know, Maddie was out there and Maddie says, I'm competing over here in, in the old Savat competition because they have an asshole Savat competition over there that the older players play. I wish we, we could have had this, something like that. Maybe we can design that later in the near future. But it was great to see that it was still out there, you know. Fred's Big Blue tells me, um, we asked him. Everybody there, who was your professor? Who's your professor? Your professor. And when they got to Nettie, he says, My professor's uh, my professor is Paul Buitron. And everybody turned around and goes, What do you mean? You live in France. How can you be training with Paul over there in the United States? He goes, and he told him the story. He's another coach of so that has been a coach for a long time. The next one would be Patrick Gavin. Patrick Gavin, or Gilguero as he's known in Savat, has been competing for a very long time. U.S. champion, won several international bouts. Um, not only here in the States, also in, uh, in Belgium and in France, and in England. And he's been a competitor that's been always on point, always looking forward, always that that uh, energy, that always questioning, hey, that, what are we going to do here? What are we going to do there? And not only that, he's also transitioned into um, the stick fighting competition. Did well there. And that's what you get. You get folks that are always moving forward, trying to bring energy and continuing it, continue moving it, you know, forward in a good way. Now, I'm switching over a little bit. Now we're gonna tra travel into, in the last several years we've done the stick fighting competition or Lacan. We couldn't have gone, so we created the Gentleman Stick Fighting Coalition with other es Escrimadors from the different Escrimas in, around the states, and it's been doing pretty well. Now, saboteurs are my students that have transferred over and done that and have done pretty well. I have to give, I don't want Yeti Banda, a great, great, uh, you know, applause because he trained, he showed up for the events, he understood, and he continued moving forward with the first couple of uh, competitions, and it was great, it was good fun. Another competitor there would also be, of course, Patrick Gavin, who transitioned over to the stick fighting. The other person that comes from, from us will be Mojo, Michael Dennis. Uh, 
Mojo from Dallas, who's been a student of mine for a very long time, and has gathered his, his, his senses and center around sick fighting in general well. My son, my son who has uh, won several, not only here and in other places, in the stick fighting, which he's embraced it very, very well. You know, but again, you know, he's been doing savat for a long time. Proud of that boy. Um, there's many others. You know, there's there's Danny Guardiola that gave it his best. Who all of a sudden, started training out of nowhere. Said, you know what, I want to do it. And uh, one thing that they all have in common, and I can tell you right now. Is each one of them had will, will to train, will to be traveling, will to get up four o'clock in the morning tra training sessions. Because remember, in Savat or the way I I train, I have classes that are ongoing. I'm not going to train those who train for fighting during the classes. I'm going to tra train you on the outside. And the reason I do that is very simple. I want to see who is committed and who is willing to train, willing to travel, willing to give it their all. And you produce great competitors, right? But remember, when you train for competition, it's a lot different than training for for just learning the art. Remember, you have to have will. Are you going to compete? Are you going to waste my time at the end of the day? Because that's the reason why I have actually stopped the competitions and taking people both boxing competitions and in some was the continual lies, the continual forfeitures, the continual pussifications of these individuals and all of a sudden at the end of a hard training session, the bouts are coming up, the butterflies are getting you, we all got them. And all of a sudden, sorry professor, I'm not going to show up because my girlfriend's going to leave me. Sorry, Professor. Uh, my girlfriend's cat died. You know, climbed the tree and fell down. I've heard all the excuses. The thing that I say is, if you come into the school, especially mine, thinking that you're going to go compete, you might. But you have to have your basics. You have to understand your fundamentals. And above all, you have to show your dedication and your will. I turned down a lot of people. That doesn't mean I won't train somebody to go back in the ring. I'll answer the next one. So that's two questions that I answered. Who was, a, who was a better of my fighters? And why did I stop taking people to the ring? Why? The excuses. Overbearing, I just said forget it. Folks, understand will, understand commitment, confidence, and train. You know, quit popping mountain duds, watching TV, hitting the YouTube, having a couple of hot pockets. If you're gonna come train, train in the school, support your local Savat Club or any boxing club or what have you where you're training out there because this goes for everything. If you pick that teacher to teach you, tell them to teach you your basics on forward. Before you go into the ring, you better have your basics packed. Because remember, a man that's not good at basics, is not anybody can be. But the man with good basics is
best kept secret of Laredo. Buoy Tron Academy, 956-401-4868, savat.biz.